All right. Welcome to the latest episode of the Quarantine Check. And my guest today is an improviser, comedian, podcast host, producer, and producer. Please welcome the extraordinarily funny Marco the Darkness Gonzalez. Ahoy hoy. Acknowledgement. Ahoy hoy. It's it's nice to see you, uh, Mr. Schneider. It is nice to see you too. Um, how have you been holding up during this time of uh worldwide pandemic? Uh, you know what? Nothing has changed for me at all. We did not have any work stoppage. Um, all we did was get like uh, a ton of lettering, just a smattering of lettering from week to week about all the measures that our employment's going to take and uh, to keep us safe and everything. And and no, we've got nothing. <laughs> no face masks. No sanitizer. Nothing. They. I mean, they made sure they gave us these pieces of paper that said we're essential and shit and they're like you know definitely report and then um you know like i said it's just over the span of the of the weeks it's the first couple weeks they were just like ah it's not really serious nothing's happening and then people started bitching about like what happens if somebody gets sick and all i swear to god within hours there was paperwork you know official letterheads you know it's like if you you know of course if you have covid you know, this is before the testing even, you know what I mean? But who the fuck even has access to a test? You know what I mean? So I, uh, I know a few people who've been tested because they come into contact with people who have the virus and I don't know, man, I don't want to get tested. That just looks fucking painful sticking that Q-tip up to your brain. Oh yeah. Fuck that dude. That's, that's bullshit right there. I, that's <laughs> like, I drive by a place, a coffee place that I like to go to that I only ever did drive through anyway. And I see right next to it, there's an urgent care with the COVID like shit set up. So basically you're sitting in your car and they shove this fucking eight inch Q-tip up your fucking nose into your head. Like while you're sitting in your car, pass, I'm a pass on that. Uh, I mean, eventually we're going to have to get tested, but I need my mom there to hold my hand. (laughs) And my mom's dead. (laughs) So that's that's going to happen. (laughs) Well, you know, you could always, um, I, I think there's a lot of strippers out of work right now, so you could always pay one of them to be your mother, to act like your mom, and, um, you know, you, you should be all right. They're almost willing to do anything, like, you know, uh, cook and clean and shit, so. That's, I, I actually matched with this girl on Tinder a couple of weeks ago, and her job was pole dancer. And I'm just trying to get her to say that you're she's a stripper, <laughs> but she refused to say it. I'm like, come on. I would be living one of my childhood dreams of dating a stripper. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, tell her fucking, just tell her to say it anyway, whether it's true or not. I mean, we know it's true, but. Uh, there, there are two jobs for a professional pole dancer. One, you're teaching a pole dancing class. Two, you're a stripper. And most of the girls who teach pole dancing classes, I'm guessing, are strippers or were in the past. Yeah, right. They retired or something. They busted a hip or something. <laughs> There, there, there used to be this bar in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, called the Claremont Lounge. Uh-huh. It was, it was in the basement of this really ghetto hotel. It was like if David Lynch owned a strip bar, like it would be like a neighborhood watering hole, house music DJs, and strippers that should have retired fifteen years earlier. Oh, nice, dude! You walked into a CAA hotbed right there. That's <laughs> that's was, what that was. What CAA? CIA? Oh, CIA, yeah. Yeah, hot, yeah. that's just information's being exchanged there. It's nothing more. Pro- probably, yeah. Um, I went there for the first out of three times after I broke my leg. Instead of taking me to the hospital, my friends took me there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I bet you were Mr. Popular with all those pain pills. Oh, I didn't have any pain pills. I was just in pain, and there used to be this uh, really old... African American stripper with big tits named Blondie, who gave you this thing called the treatment, where nice. we would bring her tits and beat you up with them. <laughs> the treatment. <laughs> That's fantastic. You know they um, I it's it's uh it's good that we're talking about this stuff. Um, so you know you're an expert. I'm an expert, clearly. But yeah, I guess like in Mexico they have like a union system for uh strippers and stuff and and sex workers where they take care of the older ones so if they have more seniority they don't just 
you know, boop, push them out the door and go, I don't know, you have to make up a name for being a whore. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a, I'm a maid or I'm a housekeeper or a pole dancer. You know what I mean? They're just like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm an old whore. You know what I mean? They just smoke cigarettes and tell the, tell the young ladies how to do it, you know? Back in my day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Smoking a cigarette. <laughs> this guy looks like trouble. Coming here all the time. <laughs> and, you know, I'm sure there's still guys that are like, you know, I mean, for a short time, I had an infatuation with granny porn. That wasn't my fault. That was uh, a friend of mine. I didn't know it existed, let's say. And uh, he would just randomly send me, you know what I mean? Like we were in a fantasy football league together. And I'd be like, hey, do you want to trade this guy for this guy? And he'd be like, um, I don't know. Let me think about it. And then he would send me something. And I'm like, yes, I'd open it up right away. And it was like a granny just fucking slapping salami. Oh, <laughs> There are some things that aren't meant to be seen by the human eye. Yeah, it, well, it was something that was etched into my brain, but then it became like a, a torture I enjoyed, let's say. Um, I used to review porn as a side hustle. Wow. It was possibly one of the worst jobs I ever had. Or, as I will say, it was one of the hardest jobs I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> You're an cool. act piece of shit. Um, was, I, can't, I can't wait till things get going again so I can throw stuff at you. <laughs> Please, don't. Please don't. I mean, did you ever get called out where people like you clearly don't know anything about sex? Why are you? Uh... What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. You know, you're get people are rough on everybody. You know, I mean, with with my podcast and stuff, people say horrible things about us all the time. I know. I've been on your show several times, and it's been too long <laughs> since I've been on. Well, I, I had to. Uh, you know, if you if you're building a base in your audience here then there's a part of Robert Schneider that you guys all need to know. He's not this clean cut uh, little, little sweetheart angel that's asking people how they're doing in quarantine. He came onto my show. Actually, he won the title to my show from uh, the guy I started it with, my co-owner at, at a card game, a dingy card game in a like shitty upstate Michigan comedy contest. They just were playing cards and he, my buddy fucking bet the house and Schneider <laughs> Schneider ended up taking over uh, ownership of said podcast for a short time. And, uh, you know, remember when you came on and you, you were like, I'm the owner now. So I'm going to, I'm going to be the, I'm going to be the boss. And you came on and hosted it and you did a terrible job. And then you got super high one time. Like, <laughs> like, like we're trying to, we're trying to do a show and everybody listen, your little angel, who does the quarantine check-ins here, who's worried about everybody. He was so high, he was playing like a 60s episode of Star Trek in his mind while he was running our show into the fucking ground. <laughs> Look, I've changed, man. I should be invited back to the show. <laughs> oh, well, okay, I'll, I'll put you on the list, but we're, we're going to we're gonna have to check out some votes and stuff and see what happens. But yeah, that, that was the best, man. That fucking, you were just out, outer space, dude. Who told Melly to make her edibles so potent? <laughs> well, I don't think she had them perfected at the time. So I think that she was, you know, she was like, I, I think this has this much in it. And then you took one and was like, yeah, that one must have been on the end of the batch because that was weak. And then you took like two more and you just disappeared. Yeah, it's not. It's something that happens. You I were think. like you. You were like that little kid that we were playing hide and seek with that hit, like took two steps from the guy counting and was like, "I'm invisible." <laughs> yeah, that's me. But seriously, you should have me back. I will not get high on your show. I mean, I don't care if you do. It was I thought it was great. I thought it was money. But uh, just I'm just letting your audience know you're building an audience here. I'm just letting your audience know you're not some sweetheart little angel that's just concerned about people. Oh, I'm not. I am not. I am not an angel at all. I am. I mean, I am America's sweetheart, but <laughs> I'm tainted. I'm like, uh, who's a Kardashian but not a Kardashian? Oh, like a Jenner? You know, I don't want to no, know none of them because they're all tainted from birth. Um, shit. I don't know celebrities. <laughs> well, besides you, of course, right? I mean, my my name is a celebrity, but I am the exact opposite of one. Yeah, I I like the name change that you had. Did you stick to the name change? Are we sticking to the name change? Performing comedy outside in the real world. Yeah, I am Robert Frank. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a good call. I think it makes sense. I don't know. You, I don't know. Are you taking any 
like name ideas from other people or anything? I, I had a whole list of them, and Robert Frank was the one that just stuck. Okay. I mean, I did you put at, it in like a search engine or something? Um, I started looking for other comedians with that name, and I couldn't find any of, at least with any, you know, reach like the other Rob Schneider. Yeah. And, you know, it's weird because at my level, I don't think it should matter, but I was having an email conversation with Mark Ridley and he's like, you need to change your name. And I'm like, you know, you start bringing up like when people start searching for you, they're never going to find you. Yeah. Yeah, dude, there was a lot. Anytime I tried to like tag you for social media when we first met, I was like, one, how how the fuck does he spell this last name? Because there's like 20 spellings of it. And then when I did get it right, it was fucking the guy from Grown Ups and shit, you know, from Saturday Night Live. Hey, what? What? A, he's so not funny. <laughs> I don't know. He had he had his he had his heyday. I mean, you can do it. You can do it all night. That's genius. Um, the when he was the copier guy, that's genius. You know. Yeah, but that was God thirty years ago now. Well, that just tells you how powerful a great line is, right? Yeah, it's it's weird. Are you watching any of the current Saturday Night Lives? Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I, I was working midnights, you know, like I said, nothing has stopped for me. I know a lot of people are on fucking vacation and stuff. And they're like, everyone is like, Whoa, man, you look tired, man. You, what are you doing? Like drugs or you having insomnia? I'm like, no motherfucker. I have not missed one day. There's been no day whatsoever where they were like, you know what? We're worried about you guys. Why don't you stay home? No, it's every day I work and I was working midnights. And stuff, and then they cut a couple jobs, so I got bumped on to second shift. So I, I am not watching like anything at all. I, I wish I could. I'm just watching like Netflix shit or like streaming something once in a while. Yeah, I mean, I don't have cable, so I watch it on YouTube. You don't have cable? You don't need cable. Do you have an over over the air antenna? No, no. Yeah, so you could just for like ten bucks, you can get one of those little magic sticks, plug it in the back of your TV. Bam! You got all the local channels, dog. I should do that. When I go back to Walmart later this week, I will go pick one up. As long as you're six feet away from where you're supposed to be and you have a mask on and stuff. I, I haven't been to Walmart. I'm a union guy. I would never go to Walmart. I wouldn't go to Walmart with a stab wound. So I, I normally don't pre-COVID, but like grocery store shopping has gotten so fucked up. Like I have to go to three different grocery stores to get everything I need for the week. Yeah, that, that is fucked up. It's, it's like the shelves are bare. Of- yes, yeah, I I guess I I don't know. I mean, I've I've popped in and out a couple times or whatever, but for the most part, I'm I'm still working. So, yeah, I, I mean, I wish I was. The, the, the these days of nothing but trying to find work are horrible. Yeah, but you like you don't you don't run a jackhammer. You're like a marketing guy, right? So you'd be you'd be they would just have you sitting at home and staring out your window and clickety click on your laptop right I, I will tell you that the month that i worked from home was one of the most stressful months i've ever had in my career wow there was no barrier between my work life and home life and i felt like i was always on call i did not sleep um i had two panic attacks and my <sighs> my depression went through the roof oh man i i I hate to laugh at you about that stuff, Rob, but I love laughing at people who have those problems like depression and anxiety and stuff like that. Cause I just don't, I don't have it. I don't, I don't think it's a thing I can have, but I do understand what you're saying about work. Like, you know, you know, we're fucking doing heavy industrial shit and, you know, transfer, I'm in the transport, the uh, logistics train or whatever, the supply chain and shit. So we can't stop doing shit. And, uh, our work has been like, which I, I would not do this, right? If this was, uh, you know, it's basically an apocalypse type situation, especially when shit starts breaking off and we got these fucking bosses going, uh, guys, I know people are sick and dying and everyone's scared. I'm going to need you to do a little more. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, if I was a boss, I would be terrified that one of my employees would kill me on site. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, and that's the thing. They were saying that in our in my industry too, it's like, guys, we got to give that little bit extra for our client. They're hurting right now. It's, I was pulling, I was putting in 60 hour work weeks during those, that month. Yeah. That's crazy. I, yeah. I don't get that. Like if you're a boss, I mean, how do you fight the human urge to go? N- no, everyone's fucking terrified. Why would I ask more 
of someone and then hang shit over their head like, well, we're probably going to go under. You guys are going to go get unemployed. You know, they hang this shit over your head and you're like, fuck. I mean, I knew people immediately that were at home and they were like, they're talking about, you know, it was like they were laid off for weeks and they were like, you know, office people. They were laid off for weeks and they were like, fuck, after those weeks, we're done. You know, the company's going to fold. It's going to go under. They're going to they're going to cut costs and stuff. And uh, so they were worried the whole time. And then you got how do you like I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm a I'm a terrible person. I'm a fucking awful bastard, Rob. You know that I would never in my wildest dreams have someone push to the brink of snapping and go, yeah, I need just a little bit more. Is I mean, I know you're having problems and stuff but i just need a little more and if you don't do it then i guess you'll you'll go out one day earlier than everybody else like i just don't i, I think, guess i'm i'm still human you know i'm a piece of shit but i'm still human i i am too but i think psychologically at least for my industry it was you know if they keep on working maybe it'll take their mind off of whatever is going to happen oh god that is man that is you're such a you're such a cow tower i get dude i would Every day my boss asked me to do something extra in the eyes of this shit, especially in the beginning. I was like, I'm going to fucking grab a pipe about a foot long and bust this motherfucker in his face. I mean, and don't get me wrong. I, while I did work the 60 hours a week, I also, you know, days where I did nothing. I watched TV. <laughs> I went out for runs. I watched porn. Well, yeah, that's, you know, that's office people. Trust me. I know these, I, I, I know people who, these office people are, oh, it's a nightmare. I had to work two hours last week. It's <laughs> shit. Meanwhile, I'm still, I'm still faced with the, uh, the idea that the fucking national guard is going to stop me going into a certain area of Detroit and I have to whip out this fucking piece of paper and tell them I'm part of the supply chain or some shit, you know? You know, it, it's actually weird. Like this quarantine, I've seen no one out there questioning where i was going <laughs> like I, I went to get some weed and i had to go to my weed dealer's house <laughs> and by that i mean my medicinal supplier and you know oh, no, yeah licensed for sure and insured yeah well see i don't i don't i'm not i don't live i don't technically don't have a michigan id so i can't get medicinal stuff so i have to go through a third party to pick it up for me. a third party so your favorite uh the busboy that talks to you the most at your favorite restaurant? Uh, it was, it's a former co-worker. Oh, okay. okay. I, I have to go to his place to pick stuff up. But yeah, like cops, I was getting, uh, you know, I, I, the kind of car, I, the guys make fun of me uh, on sitting down with stand-ups for the kind of car I drive or whatever. I, I have, uh, you know, an Impala with the, I'm all tinted out and shit and debadged. I got aftermarket shit on it and stuff. And I, I like it. I like that kind of shit. But for everybody else they don't like that stuff i i mean i swear to god before the pandemic started um i got pulled over six weeks in a row and twice it was by the same two guys in different settings like they were <laughs> i was like uh what's up guys you know and they're like oh fuck it's you you know what i mean i'm like yes i'm still going to work <laughs> where are they pulling you over at on the border of uh detroit you know i haven't gone back into detroit I think they I think they thought I was making like drug runs or something and you know I'm like fucking come on man for real dude you already know like you already pulled me over they just kept doing it I'm like bitch I've been taking this way before you were a cop I've been taking this way to work before you were a cop I'm not going to stop taking this way you know what I mean That's that's fucked up Yeah well you know they get behind me or whatever and they're like oh we got a Latino here he's got we don't know what kind of car he's driving yeah. It's got nice lights on it. This guy looks like a drug dealer. <laughs> oh man, it's uh, it's messed up. <laughs> but no, dude. After the pandemic started, nothing. Ghost town, you know. <laughs> no, it's weird. Like I, I stayed at work until mid March, and I, I worked downtown at the time. And walking from the office to my parking garage, no one on the streets of Detroit. Not even the homeless people. It was fucked up. Dude, I, I like I've been seeing a lot of homeless people like they're just come, like outside of Southwest. They're um, they're like invincible. You know what I mean? Like there was the short time for like probably the first two weeks. I didn't see a homeless person. And then once I started seeing homeless people, I go, I think we're going to be all right, man. But dude, homeless people right now are like the Avengers. They're like superheroes. Everyone's afraid of them. And they're fucking, they're basically invincible. If they take two steps towards a normal person, that person's running. 
and they and they're never sick. No, it's it's weird. Like, it's you know, I think what there's a million people who have the disease right now, which is basically just the population of Detroit or a small part of the population of New York. Yeah. Um, I I really thought it was going to be a lot worse than it was. I mean, it's still friggin' tragic, and I don't want to get this at all because of my asthma. I will probably die. Yeah, you you're in a bad. You probably are. You look diabetic. You're like fifty. You're overweight. Now you have asthma. Oh well, man. Have, um, and and you I, have a sedent, you have a sedentary lifestyle. Oh, I, you're I, you're I, fucked. I, I, I am not diabetic. I actually run about four to six miles every day. Holy shit! Yeah, see, you you strike me as a diabetic because you have you have a diabetic body. Well, <laughs> it's a finished diabetic body. Like I, I don't run. I, I love. Uh, no, no, that's that's great. I'm just fucking with you, but yeah, I uh, I was talking to one of my office buddies, and he goes, "Fuck, man! By now, you probably had it like five times." I thought it for sure. I know, and I know there's people who may listen, may or may not listen. And I really don't give a fuck about your opinion or whatever uh, who's listening that disagrees with me. But I, I've probably already had this bitch a couple times. I've been working outside for like 20 years and shit. And I'm good for like three fucking flus or colds a year. Some years I don't get any. And sometimes I get three. You know what I mean? And so this is just a regular. I have a regular regiment. People who work outside on a regular basis, they have a regular regiment of shit that they do. They stack up vitamin C. This ain't new shit for people who work outside. And uh, but I got sick at the end of the year, uh, right around New Year's, where I was never that sick before in my life. You know what I'm saying? And and it was fucking. There were I think at one point I remember saying like, God, I wish I'd die. That's how sick I was. But um, I thought it was because you know I'm 40 now. You know and I'm, I got I put on weight. You know what I mean? I go, this has got to be it. You know what I mean? Find all these years working off shifts and trying to live bulletproof is caught up with me, and I'm gonna fucking you know, fucking go out because of the flu. I didn't even know this fucking shit wasn't even out yet. Nobody was talking about it. One of my homeboys had the same shit that I did like in November. So no, I've already um, I've already had this shit or variations of it. I've heard from a few comics who said they've had it already. And um, one of my coworkers, she had it in January or February. Like she was just beyond sick. Still came into the office. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's so, before your company's policy changed about if you're sick, stay home. You know, well, they were then they were saying if you, it was always been the policy if you're sick, stay home. But it's like she came in because you know everyone knew this thing was ha- like in January we kind of knew this might be happening, so everyone was at that point still panicking for you know their place in the in the kingdom. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I mean, the, and that's a catch twenty two with the companies. You know. Um, these American companies that are like, you know, go, 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 push, 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 you know, you're a piece of shit. You could be replaced. You're not really valuable. And then, you know, and then they throw that shit in there. Like, if you don't feel good, take a day off. You know what I mean? So yeah, I I don't blame her for coming into work if you got the sniffles or whatever, you know, but, um, yeah, dude, it's just, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know what, as far as the people who got it like really bad, I think, you know, it's all, it's genetics, dude. You know what I mean? I mean, really, that's that's got to be it. You know what I mean? Some humans are built for it. Some humans aren't, you know? Well, as they said, most people have it, show no symptoms. They're just carriers. And that's the worst of us because we're still going out and going to grocery stores and hopefully not passing it to anybody. I'm, like, I'm masked up. I just got gloves today. So now I'm gloved up. Wow. Yeah, dude, I just, I just, I was telling the guys uh, last night, uh, we did a record and, uh, you know, we were, we, I, I just was like, well, let me, let me talk about the most fucking middle-aged dad thing I can talk about here just to change it up a bit. Um, but I, one of my garbage cans had a hole in it cause I've had it for years and I go, fuck this garbage can. I'm going to go get another one. Motherfucker, dude. I like to wear sunglasses. I work off shift. So the sun hurts, hurts my eyes. So I'm wearing sunglasses now I got to wear a fucking mask. You know, the mask is looped around one of my fucking sunglass ears. I go to the door. The bitch cracks it open with a mask and gloves. I can't let you in. I got to, you have to wait till someone fucking exits the store. I'm like, I'm at a fucking Ace Hardware, dog. Like, what? Like, there's, the only reason this thing's open is for fucking light bulbs and fucking leaf bags. You know what I'm saying? Let me in that bitch. I need a garbage can, dude. 
I mean, you could have got a target. You got one. Well, tar- I know Target's full, Target's full of fucking, uh, you know, shopaholic women. You know what I mean? Of all ages. I think they it, it starts at 12 now with chicks. They, Target is like a place to shop for no reason. They just walk around Target. You know, Target is a nicer Kmart. Exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's a shameless, you know, it's less shameful, you know, to, to go to Target and just amble about. You know, like, do, do they need that many fucking options for, you know, air fryers or, you know, a fucking sandwich maker? You want a hot sandwich maker, Rob? There's five of them at Target. Well, I, I have the original sandwich maker, a toaster for the bread. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then I have the hands where I put the meat between the bread. <laughs> oh, you're the... you're a caveman. Yeah, you're. No, I'm simple. I know how to make a sandwich. <laughs> the old no, fat. You're, you're making an argument as why you should pass away from COVID. Because you make a sandwich like a caveman, you should make the sandwich and then put it in the sandwich heat press. I don't. I, well, I don't like that way. I like it the, the way I like it. Yeah. See, this is why you have to be eliminated. Because you're <laughs> I'm America's sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna miss you. We'll give you a day in February. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Robert, Robert Frank Day. No, man, that's cruel. You can't. You don't want me gone. <laughs> that'd be that'd be a sweet parade. I'm. I, I don't want you gone, but. You know, just think about it. That'd be a sweet parade, man. You know, like what kind of what's your favorite candy? So they're going to have a little parade down some podunk ass street in Michigan. And everyone's got Robert Schneider heads on helmets on and stuff. And, you know, everyone's dressed like Robert Schneider going to work. I I will tell you this. I have thought long and hard about my funeral. (laughs) And I've actually made a funeral playlist to be played. That's that's a nightmare. It's not because I had a friend died and his parents, all they played was that Eric Clapton song, Tears of Heaven. And I'm like, I don't want that. No human being should have to have that song constantly played. So I, I spent a year compiling the, the ultimate songs that I wanted played at my funeral. Oh, God. Well, give me five at least. Is Tesla one of them? God, no. <laughs> God, no. Hold on. Let me, let, me, let me pull up the playlist. Uh, Notorious B.I.G. Nope. Um, God, I suck at this. Um, Billy Ocean. Well, I would, I like Billy Ocean, but why would Billy Ocean be in there? Why not? I'm just, look, I'm just throwing stuff at the wall. It's your, it's your uh, dead playlist, not so, mine. So we start out with the song Atmosphere by Joy Division. Okay, Joy Division, very good. Um, Good Riddance, The Time of Your Life by Green Day. Okay, Green Day, okay, very good. The song Going Underground by The Jam. No, I've not heard that. Because I'm going underground because I'll be buried. Jesus uh, Christ. <laughs> um, Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd, which might be the most cliche song on the list. <laughs> oh, um, God. My Way by Sid Vicious. Um, Ashes to Ashes by David Bowie. And we conclude with uh, Johnny Cash's We'll Meet Again. Oh, not bad. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And no Eric Clapton, no Tesla. Um, no Tesla. <laughs> I, I friggin' hate Tesla. I think they're one of the worst rock bands ever. What about, tri- what about Triumph? <sighs> you got to cut them cut some slack because they were Canadian. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I like, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of like rock or anything, but one of my cooler uncles when I was a, a young fella was fucking super into like hair band rock shit and it was just he'd like hand me these fucking i wore hand-me-down shit all the time i'd get all these fucking hand-me-down rock shits like i'd be wearing like night ranger in the 90s and shit and i'm like people are like oh dog you know like night ranger sweet i'm like i don't even know who the fuck night ranger is it's just a long sleeve shirt oh man that's you're lucky you are lucky that you never heard night ranger well, it was a, like a super band or something. You know, I got older and was like, who the fuck? It wasn't it like Ted Nugent and the dude from Sticks or something. No, that's something else. Night Ranger was uh, the song Sister Christian. OK, Sister. Oh, uh, yeah, I've heard of that song. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm not I'm not a big fan of metal, but there's this really cool documentary called Decline of Civil- Civilization Part Two: The Metal Years. And the highlight of the film is one of the members of the band Wasp, drunk off his ass at a swimming pool, 
with his mom sitting beside him knitting. It is so fucking surreal. <laughs> That's crazy. I thought you were going to say his, his, he was trying to make out with his mom at the pool. No, his mom was just like this old... I mean, you might be a because he's like the granny porn. Very old geriatric woman. Just Ooh. while her son is drunk off his ass. Nice. What were her feet like? I bet they were in good shape. You didn't see them. You know, there was... This was made by a real filmmaker who did not use any fetishes in her film. Oh, boo. God, what a piece of trash. Who's uh, she pandering to? She was trying to document the 1980s metal scene in Los Angeles. Wow. There was probably a lot of fucking... You know what? It was so rampant at the time then. There was probably people who were thought they were making deals with the devil, and it, it was just some fucking dude playing tricks on him. You know what I mean? Like, that's how bad metal was in the 80s. Well, I, I will, I'll tell you another story. So there's a band in that movie called Odin, a, a band that they were saying was the next big thing. And um, I had a co-worker that I worked with, and he told me he was in a metal band in the late 80s. And I'm like, man, there were a lot of shitty metal bands like Odin. And he's like, how do you know about Odin? <laughs> <laughs> he was in the band for a short period of time. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm like, I had so many questions for him. He eventually stopped talking to me because of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, dude. Oh, my God. Because I actually would send him clips of the scene from the movie, like, every day, of this old guy who ran one of the clubs on the Sunset Strip with all these women behind him yelling, Odin, Odin. <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. Yeah, you probably drove that guy to suicide. No, he's still alive. He's still alive. You ever seen you ever seen the movie The Rocker? Oh, the the Rain Wilson classic? Yeah, right. That's probably what that guy was. He was like had to move back in with his family for a few years and uh, he he became a producer of advertising. Oh, nice. Wow. So he's just fucking full on sellout. Well, he had kids, so he had to, you know, move on with his life. That's not what a rocker would do, man. No, no, no. But eventually, you know, it, it was expensive to live in Los Angeles. No, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's that's. I mean, I I, <laughs> I think that's funny too. Is there's so many people who fucking go out there and just come back. I mean, I did the same thing. I never made it to L.A. because I was just too scared. But um, you know, I probably would have just done crystal meth and never been heard from again. But um, yeah, the, like I I knew a guy I waited tables with who was like he he went out there. He did stand up, and uh. He, he didn't even have a place to go, you know, because it's, it's somewhat still bohemian like that, where you can show up without a place to live, go there, do a set. Someone liked him and was like, do you have a place to, to crash? No, I don't. You want to crash at my place? They get super high and drunk, and then homeboy's digging through his books when he wakes up, his notepads and shit. I'm like, motherfucker, dude. He goes, don't do it, man. It fucking sucks out there. It, you know, it, it is scary, but I think there's a point where you have to, like, if you're in a city like Detroit or Cleveland or Baltimore, there's a point where you have to leave because you've accomplished everything you can in the small market. Right. I mean, I, I give it up for people like Jeff Horst, uh, Marcus, uh, his sidekick whose name I can't remember <laughs> right now. Oh, Asenmacher. Yeah, Asenmacher, yeah. Um, Justin. Yeah, and I mean, I give it up for them for going out there and doing it because at least... They're trying. The same, I mean, it's not the same for all of us who are, like, I'm at a point in my life and you're at a point in your life where it's hard, it would be hard to do that and just lead such a minimalist lifestyle. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I, I did it before and I've lived out of my car before and toured around the country back in the day and it was fucking, it was cool, but it also was fucking horrible at the same time. Like, it, like... You know, it was cool in the fact that, like, you didn't know where you were going to get money. You know what I mean? I was doing more, like, labor-ready shit than anything else, you know, to get money. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody wants to hear a fucking... <laughs> when I lived in Oregon, um, this fucking kid tried to trade me a poem for, uh, for like, some money so he could eat and shit. He was a hippie. And, uh, I was, I, you know, I'm from here. I was like, I have never heard of that in my fucking life. You're blowing my fucking mind, dude. And he was dead serious. And were I you, met it. I, in, I met it. Go ahead. Were you in Portland? Yeah, I was outside. Yeah, I was in Portland. And then I met another guy in Arizona who wanted to trade me some rocks. 
dude, that guy's feet look like they should have been cut off like months be- months before that. They were disgusting. And he's like, I'll trade you a rock. He's like, this rock is from over here and shit. I'm like, why don't I just go get a fucking rock from 10 feet away, asshole? You know what I mean? I just I just don't get it. Yeah, I'm I'm not geared for that lifestyle. No, I'm not either, but I'll, I'll again, I, I, I'll give it up. There's a comedian really funny. I've had him on my shows, a guy named Dan Alton. Just travels all over the country in his car telling jokes and you know, he's he's really funny. But, you know, he's also in his probably early to mid twenties where you can do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the time to to do that shit. This is when you're young. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying, you know, fuck, if you want to leave if you're on your third marriage and it just ain't working out, your kids don't like you, your dick stops working or something, and you know, yeah, leave. <laughs> you know who am i to stop you but you know yeah i i mean i'm having fun well i was having fun going on stage telling my dumb jokes and ha- you know that, that's all that mattered to me was having fun and having that escape of not doing the same thing every night like going out to a bar hanging out with my friends talking about what we did last year and how great it was yeah yeah, instead you get to, you know, almost get beat up by people and offend people by uh, broaching touchy subjects on a regular basis. You know, I kind of enjoy that, actually. I know I know you do. I, yeah. I can smell it on you. comes out of your pores. Um, I am trying to do a much cleaner set, though. I am working on cleaner material. I'm sorry to hear that. No, what, are, what are you going to do, host The Muppet Show? I would kill to host a Muppet show. Well, you're not going to get it with your depression jokes, dude. I know. I know. I'm having, I'm telling different stories about my life. And I think in the post COVID world, I don't know if dark material is going to work as much. Um, you, you know, I, I never care period anyway. So, <laughs> well, I had, a, I had a really bad experience on December 30th of last year. I did a show up in Port Huron and I was doing my suicide joke. And as soon as I mentioned when I was 16, I tried killing myself. This old woman who was sitting right up front started shaking. I do another line of the joke and she starts crying. She then stands up. She goes, I'm sorry. I can't take this. My grandson killed himself a month ago. And then, you know, left the room. Every- how, much did, how much did you pay her to do that? I didn't pay her anything. <laughs> And she left the room and, you know, I didn't know what to do. Like, I'm frozen on stage. Everyone in the audience was, like, friends with this woman. Oh, boy. I had to end my set. And the last thing I want to do as a comic is make someone, you know, make someone cry. So what are the chances of that happening at a show again? Oh, I'd say suicide's pretty, uh, that's a thing. Yeah, but I mean, now even more. With uh, in this in this in the era of COVID, suicide rates are up. Yeah, that's that one's kind of tough. I don't know. I used to I used to tell this joke. Uh, Shank would tell me to stop telling it, but it, it was basically uh, you know rubbing homeless veterans in people's faces, and um, people you always get those fucking groans and shit. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm like, well, what the fuck, dude? I mean, they're fucking everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gonna you're going to ignore them. <laughs> you know what I mean, you're going to ignore them when they need a couple bucks. You ignore them when they fucking, they're all smacked out. You know what I mean? You're going to ignore them when you drive by a whole fucking soup kitchen line full of them. And now you, you don't want to hear it. You know what I mean? You, you, you'd rather hear a joke about war, but you don't want to hear a joke about veterans. I don't know. People, everyone has their own taste. Like I, I'm writing, I'm running some virtual mics right now. And this one person keeps on trying to get on every one. And I had to tell him that, look, I've had complaints about your jokes from people in our audience. Awesome. <laughs> Are you going to drop a name? I can't drop a name because I'm, we're supposed to talk later on today about it. <laughs> hey, you can tell me, you can tell me off record if you want. Yeah, this person's new to comedy, but, and they're at the still, they're still at the point in their career where they're trying all this edgy material without a purpose to it. Like, some of the material was miso- very misogynist. Some of it was very racist. And this guy sounds great. <laughs> he's new to comedy. He's very new to comedy. So, 
But you know, we're, we're, when we all when we all start doing it, we still think, all right, I am going to do material no one's ever done before. I am going to take people to the edge of what they know, and usually it's shit. And then you oh, start, yeah. and then you start getting more personal in your stuff, and then that's when your jokes finally start clicking. Yeah, uh, Pat, I, I really like Patton Oswald. I remember a special where he did the same thing. You know, he was like, oh, I'm fucking, I'm an edge lord. I'm going to fucking, you know, I, I rented a house on the edge of fucking, you know, edge lord town and shit. And I'm the fucking mayor and stuff. And then he went to a mic where they let up a homeless guy who was dotting off during his set on heroin. And he was like, I don't know anything at all. And the guy killed and shit. And he goes, I, I. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit comedy. I don't know anything about it. I, uh, I've encountered several people like that. And I've, I've told this story before on the show. I'll tell it again because I love it. I was, when I was living in Kansas City, there was this mic at a bar called The Red Front. The Red Front is the dingiest fucking place you'll ever do comedy. Like, hookers hang out there and rub their coochies on the seats. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, it is. It was disgusting. I'm pretty sure I got hepatitis just by walking in there. <laughs> but one night this guy comes up on stage and he was so fucked up on whatever. And uh, he comes on there and he goes, I, am do- I don't tell jokes. I tell the truth. I'm like, oh, fuck, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, this is a good gimmick. And, and he starts talking about being in the Navy and working on an aircraft carrier. And one day he had to clean the aircraft so he decided to jerk off in there. And that was his joke. No one's laughing except for his girlfriend who's going, yeah, baby, tell it like it is. <laughs> and then after he told his joke, he reached into his coat pocket and pulled out this baby kitten. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I'm like going, I'm not funny. <laughs> <laughs> because What do I, I know? I don't know shit. I write material. <laughs> and this guy... isn't funny his material is shit but he is on the next level (laughs) (laughs) well that's like me and dave we always uh we can't we develop the kaufman scale you know and that's when you see somebody who's like that you know what i mean just next level you know what i mean like they're doing comedy in the fourth dimension and shit and you're like yeah i don't get it but i feel like a tidal wave of energies just hit me you know what i mean (laughs) I mean, that's how I feel about Lincoln. Like, I think he's on a whole nother level than us. Yeah. And none of us understand. Well, like, he's fucking, he does kill it. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how to feel about Lincoln. You know what I mean? Like, I've never had, like, a normal conversation with the dude, but he is fucking really funny. And he does some really funny shit. Um, so, when I first met Lincoln, we redrove to the Cabbage Patch together. And I was excited about it because I wanted to, I wanted him to, I wanted to see if he would break character. <laughs> yeah. And during our ride there, and I took the longest way possible because I just wanted to, I <laughs> wanted him to break. <laughs> he ended up breaking me because he, what well, he is, who he is on stage. Yeah. <laughs> so insane. Yeah, I think he's a little more wordy when he's trying to entertain than, you know. Well, we had him on the podcast before, and I swear to God, and like two hours you said 50 something words you know and he and he's like you know I'd, I'd love to work with you guys and get back on and stuff and i'm just like i don't have a spot for 25 words an hour you know what i mean like i just don't know where to put them you know yeah uh here's the thing though he's fucking killing it on instagram and tiktok <laughs> oh no he's a fucking yeah he's a machine everyone loves the shit he does like i i have a kid uh who's like an older teen and <laughs> i saw them watching his fucking tiktok shit I uh, I went to one of his live Instagram things. He had like fifty people in the room, and I just I wish I took a screenshot of it. And this one kid just said, basically, my mom says you're a bad influence on me. <laughs> oh my I, god! I want someone to say that about me, <laughs> dude. People were people are like imitating his uh, his food eating shit. He was on um, he was on like Aaron Paul, like the Pauls do, uh, and and they're you know who they are right. The guy from Breaking Bad? No, no, no. Um, oh, yeah, the, the Paul. Yeah, the Paul guy, the YouTube kids or whatever. Yeah. At the, at their twins and stuff. The one guy boxed some British guy or something. But um, 
yeah, they they do a breakdown and they go, this fucking guy's a genius, man. And like, it's that that's right there. That's good as gold, you know. Yeah, I mean, hopefully he can start monetizing it. I think he was monetizing it for a short time, and then he got somehow he got booted off TikTok or something. I know I went on one of his uh, streams one time just to see how it was going. There were people checking in like fucking crazy, man. And I said something, you know, I guess an outdated catchphrase that Lincoln used to use or whatever. You know, this is when he started going to Crucial. And uh, I said something before that, pre-Crucial, and people were jumping on my nuts about it. They were like, ooh, stupid fuck. It's, it's fucking Crucial. I'm like, oh, my God, help. <laughs> but it's weird. Like, I have a friend who went, actually, he was the second guest on the show, a guy named Matt Keck. Um, he got internet famous for the video, I'm a snake. I don't know if you remember that one. I do believe I've heard this video, yeah. Yeah. But it propelled him to an amazing career that I can't talk about because it's a secret. Uh-huh. Uh, but it prope- that video, because it went viral, propelled him to a really cool job. And I hope the same for Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, he, he could probably do it. Because you eventually got to take this to the next level, and just doing the videos isn't going to be enough. I mean, yeah. just he's never gone viral for anything. Yeah, I don't. But you know, with that level of of success, are you, you know, you're going to need somebody. You know what I mean? Like, is someone? How does that work? Is someone going to reach out to you? I would always assume some some bastard who's just got dollar signs racked up is going to reach out to somebody like that and go, this is what you need to do. You know, I could, I could put you in all the good, I could put you in all the right spots. Well, you the, know, the, the problem is there's a lot of shysters out there who will take advantage of you. He needs someone like a, a reputable branding agent to come out and say, Hey Lincoln, I'm not collecting any money for you up front, but here are some deals I have for brands that want to do business with you. I take 10%. That's what he needs. He'll also need a lawyer. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, but I don't, like you said, shysters, I think you're going to run into a thousand more shysters than you're going to run into that one uh, genuinely interested person who wants to do business and sees that it's going to happen the right way. You know what I mean? It's it's all these, it's going to be a, a million shortcut guys who are just going to rip people off. Well, the thing is, they're going to think he's a kid and want to take advantage of him. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of people taking advantage of others, I, 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 are you familiar with the game Words with Friends? Um, yes, I've never played it. Okay, doesn't matter if you play it or not. So I was playing a game with this guy from England, and he started messaging me. And I'm like, this is weird. No one messages me unless I know them. Yeah. And mostly it's for smack talk. But like this guy goes, hey, how are you? And I'm like, great. He goes, what do you do for a living? I'm like, I'm an advertiser. He goes, I'm a Forex trader. And I'm like, oh, fuck, this is a scam. So I played along. <laughs> and, you know, he's trying to get money for me to invest. And I'm like, no, no, no. He goes, I'm like, send me to one of your web company's websites. He's like, all right, try this one. So I looked at the website. And I'm just doing a deep dive into it. So I find the company address. I type it into my Google Maps. And the street and address don't exist. So I'm like, hey, man, I did just curiosity. I checked what's on your website. Your address isn't real. He's like, oh, man, we're just doing website maintenance. I'm like, come on. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> website maintenance means the whole site is down and a fake address doesn't appear. <laughs> yeah, you stupid fuck. And he's like, oh, you think I'm a scam, bro? I'm like, yeah, the second you use the word bro, I know you're a scam. Because <laughs> <laughs> bro is the word you use when you're talking to someone who's not really a bro. <laughs> Yeah, I guess yeah, that could be construed that way. Yeah, unless you're unless you're Mike Eshack, because when he uses the word bro, it's genuine. Yeah, I like I'm I'm a I'm partial to the word bro. It's got a couple meanings for me. I like to use it in uh, as like a, a bonding thing, like for friendship. <clears throat> but I also like to use it aggressively. You know what I mean? Like insinuating that we are not bros. Yeah, that's how I usually take it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, man, this is this has been awesome. Um. Before we go, um, yeah. I have become a big fan of missed connections on the on the Craigslist. Oh, I yeah, I remember I watched a couple of uh, of your uh, quarantines and stuff, and this is how you this is the sh- the show closer. I yeah. love when people I love when people get into a Craigslist. I, I think it's where the creepiest people in the world go looking for love. 
Agreed. Um, so this one was from Chicago probably a few days ago. And I, I don't know how I feel about it because they're, I'm just going to say the person who wrote this is a fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> it's titled Car Sex ASAP. Now, ASAP yeah, that sounds good. Should always be capitalized. <laughs> they did not capitalize everything except for the A. So, I want to have sex in a car. I've never done it before, and it is a fantasy of mine. I am 18, and I do work. If you want to make this a one-time thing or an ongoing one, it's okay. Let's talk. Here's my Gmail. What's the Gmail address? <clears throat> it makes no sense because they say G-M-A-L M-O-M-C-478. Well, that's yeah. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It would have. I, I don't know. It would have been. Where, where's the region? What region are they in? They're in Chicago, um, over by North Elston Avenue in Horner Park. Yeah. So it, it, I mean, his Gmail should be fuck the socks at gmail dot com or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, who's ever whoever had a fantasy of wanting to have sex in a car? It's more done out of necessity. <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess some people were. You know, there's a lot of incels out there. That, you know, they're more afraid to even speak to a woman, forget being fucking rejected. You know, everyone's got a little fear of being rejected, right? I mean, over after you get your numbers up, you don't really give a fuck about being rejected anyway. But oh, no, you still, still have fear of being rejected. I, well, I mean, I, I guess I don't. That got beat out of me. But um, so, yeah, with these incels, they don't even want to fucking talk to a chick. So, yeah, I could see really lame uh fucking fantasy you know what i mean like i really want to put two straws in the same milkshake like what you know what i mean like what the fuck are you yeah you're 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 more right about it being necessity it's like we gotta fuck my dad's still up in the you know he he didn't go to work yet you know what i mean like we got we got to fuck in the car i i think for me it'd be like i couldn't bring a girl back to my parents place at that time because they would make a big deal about me bringing a girl back to the place. They'd be like, oh, what do you want for breakfast? We'll call your parents and say you're spending the night here tonight. Oh, my God. Robert, um, this is a big night. We're going to take a Polaroid before you guys go into the bedroom. Put it up later. Uh, we're gonna, let's call your grandmother. She will. She's going to love this. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a nightmare. Yeah. Even if you were, you were like, fucking 18 or 19 and you got... Uh... A forty-five-year-old prostitute with you with a neon miniskirt on. Oh man, gross! <laughs> yeah, she's like, I can go for some breakfast. Like, oh my god, I, I can uh, stop. A girl I was dating once came to the house, and my mom made a friggin' big deal out of it. It was it was so embarrassing for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, dude. That's that. Yeah, that sucks, man. I don't know. I'm. I mean, I'm. You know, I'm a Mexican dude, so you know. Chicks were not not a big deal. Mexican chicks don't get along with like just regular chicks. You know what I mean? You got a couple different kinds of them. Most of them are just as soon as they see any chick come into the house with you, it's pure silence. But then they talk shit in the kitchen with each other, with all the other chicks or whatever. And then when you're done fucking them or whatever, you know what I'm saying, getting head from them or whatever, and you kick them out, uh, <clears throat> they'll uh, they'll be like, I hope you don't plan on this with them and shit. You know what I mean? I'm like, I. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, how many more times are you going to do that? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I guess till she makes me stop or something, you know what I mean? Till she says no more. I don't, fuck, man. Which, which I'm sure a lot of girls say to both of us is no more, no more. <laughs> and it's already. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's been said for sure. All right, man, this is great. Um, Everyone check out Marco's podcast, Sitting Down with Stand-Ups. You can find that on iTunes, Spotify. Pretty much everywhere you can find podcasts. Absolutely. And seriously, you should have me back on the show. As you can see, I've I've improved a lot since then. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I mean, you say this, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna have you back on, and there's gonna be a party going on. You know, an anti-COVID party. There's gonna be DJs and shit. Dog nope. with sunglasses. Nope. I I will give it my full attention. <laughs> Okay, Rob. I, I will. Be, I will be as professional on your show as I am on my own. Yeah, this this was actually. I'm surprised. I mean, I had to do some homework on you, and stuff, and double check. But yeah, this was. Uh, 
This was an interesting treat. Thank you. I will take that as a compliment. And, uh, <laughs> so, you know, we do have a great show tomorrow. We have Bart Dangus on here. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And we're going to soon have our final episode of the quarantine check-in. What, are you, you done? This is over well, after? I am going to make it into something else. Okay. I want to do it. It's just going to become a weekly show called The Hang. Okay. Their part of doing comedy is The Hang. And I want to hang with my favorite comedians. Well, that's that's really great. You you tell Bart Dangus I said hello. I will. I will. And um, thank you so much. And hopefully I will see you in person sooner than later. Yeah. Well, let's do it, man. Cool, man. Thank you again. All right.